Mark, uh, a great overtime win by your club over uh, the top team in the Central Division, the Chicago Wolves. Just how did you see this one play out for your club and uh, just your thoughts on an overtime win over the team? Well, I, you know, I, I thought that uh, early on, I thought we had some jump in the game and, and some momentum. And then I thought the start of the second period, uh, we lost that momentum. And uh, I think for the first 10 minutes of that period, anyways, I thought we were on our heels a little bit. And uh, we fought back in the last 10 of that period. And then the third period, I think, was a bit of a, a, bit of a wash. Uh, you know, I, we did what we had to do. We got some, we got some, uh, some saves when we, when we needed the saves. And, uh, you know, Bobby Lynch scored. We had some guys that uh, Bobby Lynch scored two, I think. And, and then uh, Poli scores a, a nice one in the OT. So some guys came through for us at the right moments. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I thought we did what we had to do, but it wasn't uh, wasn't a barn burner, that's for sure. No, of course. But we'll circle on some of those goals in just a minute. But what does this say about the overall group, I guess, just battling a tough team like Chicago? You know where they are in the standings. Um, but having so many guys who are, you know, still up with the Winnipeg Jets or on the taxi squad, uh, still some guys that do the COVID-19 protocols as well. But um, just with the group that you had to ice tonight, just the still getting the full two points in overtime, that must still be pretty impressive. Yeah, I think it's, you know, I think it's really uh... – no, it's a tribute to them. They work really hard. Uh, everyone that's brought into the group seems to be accepted very easily, and uh, the core group that, that's still there uh, seems to uh, uh, bring them in, and uh, they seem to play for each other, even though there's a lot of new bodies. So uh, that's the one thing that, that we have in, since the road trip started, and uh, we have a really good chemistry and a really good work ethic, and that's half the battle. Uh, they work for each other, uh, and you can see that uh, – you know, they have, there's some desperation in their games at times where they block shots or they dive at the blue line to get a puck over. They just do a lot of things to, to try to win the two points. Evan Poli, of course, with the OT winner, he's talked about how he's not necessarily here for his goal scoring abilities. But when it does, when he does get an overtime goal like that, what does that do for just the guys on the bench? And just to see Evan, like I said, go to the, the, the net like that and get a goal like that, what does that do for him as well, I guess? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's great for him. He works really hard. Uh, you know, he had a, a pretty strong game for us and uh, getting pucks out. And he, he he's uh, he's strong on the puck. And, and uh, you know what? Uh, a lot of people don't know about him is uh, he, he's a great team player. He's great on the bench. He's great with everybody. So um, I'm sure the players loved it that he got the uh, the overtime, overtime goal there. And then last one for me here, Mark, but just seeing Bobby Lynch's second goal in the game there at the end of the first period. I mean, you've seen his skills before. I'm not sure if you've seen his dangles like that uh, in practice or anything like that, but to see a guy like Bobby who's been called up from Newfoundland and uh, make the most of his opportunity with the Moose, especially in scoring a, a pretty impressive goal like that, what does that mean too? Well, again, I mean, it, it, it's another guy that, uh, you know, he works hard and, and uh, he's gotten the opportunity here. Uh, I think he lined up uh, – today uh, you know as our first line and he's gotten an opportunity uh, coming from uh, the east coast hockey league i know he's been here before but he gets called up and he's you know works his way up to the first line with uh with all the uh, call-ups and the covid uh, protocols and and stuff like that and he takes advantage of it so that's the key is that these players that have these opportunities uh, show us what they can do and and you know bobby's one of the guys that has Thanks, Mark. We'll go next to Jacob Stoller from Full Press Hockey. Go ahead, Jacob. Hey, Mark. Further to that last point about, uh, you know, taking an opportunity and running with it, how big do you think this is for your group that, you know, along the way of this marathon, it's on a sprint, along this long season, you're getting a chance here to see how people are playing different roles and they've fared quite well. And so the question is... You're... Sorry, sorry. Um, how, how big is that for you guys to, to get to see guys in bigger roles when, you know, yeah. in other circumstances you wouldn't be able to? Sorry. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I, I think it's really, I think it's huge because, you know, there's, there's probably going to be a time here where uh, we get some players back, you know, and uh, now we have an idea of, of how far we can push guys and, and what level they can play at. Can they play first line wing, second line wing? Are they penalty killers? Uh, are they power play guys? Like we, we've put guys into positions that without all these empty uh, positions on our hockey team probably would have never got that opportunity. So I think down the road here, it's going to be huge. We're learning a lot about these players, uh, you know, like where we can put them. And uh, I think they're learning a lot about themselves too, uh, you know, with, with the ice time that they're getting and I, they feel more and more comfortable in, in the league. 
many I've talked to that have played for you now or in the past will describe you as a player's coach. That's a term that, you know, many people use in the game, but it can be kind of a blanket term. But um, in your eyes, philosophically, how, what, how do you think it is important um, to get to know the players on an individual level, especially, you know, for your group where there's so much turnover, so many bodies coming in and out. How important is that to you to get to know the guys on that level? Yeah, I, I, I think it's huge. Uh, you know, like, uh, I think everyone, everyone learns a different way, you know, and some people learn with, uh, you know, communication. Some people you have to be hard on. Other people, it's, you know, they don't get the point, so you've got to show them video. I, I think it's important that you learn uh, everybody and what makes them tick and, um, you know, I could go, I could go over 10 different players in that room and it's, it's important to know uh, how they'll take information in from you, you know, whether some guys need to, you need to sit down and have a cup of coffee with and, and other guys you don't, they don't want to, you know, it's a 10 second conversation. They want to see it on video and done. So I think it's important for us as coaches to, uh, to learn all the different personalities and what it takes uh, to teach them. Is that something that you've always believed about your coaching career or maybe in the last couple of years you've it's been reinforced somehow or um, has it evolved or have you always kind of had that mantra with players? Uh, I think I always have, like when I was here before as an assistant, I thought that, you know, building relationships with, with certain players that we were trying to de develop uh, meant a lot to the player um, and you spend a lot of time with them. So I think that, uh, and it carried over in Anaheim. I think that was a big role for me uh, there is to get close to guys, you know, and, and, spend time with them so they they respected you and listened to you um yeah i i think that's my style of coaching that's what i like to do i don't necessarily think uh, everybody agrees with it but that's that's how i do it um just a quick question on uh luke johnson uh is there any update on his timeline and did he is it the same injury as before i believe it is the same injury and uh you know, I, his timeline, I don't, I, I couldn't tell you, I would imagine it's, 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 it's not short term. So, you know, it's, he's going to, he's going to be another six to eight weeks. Um, and one final question here, um, Evan Cormier, obviously, you know, we've talked about him a lot of the last couple of weeks. He's been a real um, you know, backbone for your group. Um, what have you learned about him over these couple of weeks, getting to know him as a person and just as a competitor um, through what has been obviously a great run for him? Yeah, a key word that you just use there, competitor. I mean, he he battles and uh, like he he fits the mold of what's going on in the dressing room right now with all these guys that are battling for spots. He's a guy, um, you know, I'm not. Uh, he's a guy that's battling uh, to get his game back or get his position back to where he was uh, previously, and he's. He's in there uh, battling every night for us, and the, the the players love it. He he seems to always make a game uh, or two game saves, you know that uh, that uh, gets the bench all riled up and everybody's standing and playing. So the group's playing for him. He's he's earned that.